फ्रेंड्स हेलो इन टूडे सेशन वी विल ट्राई एंड डिस्कस द एम्ब्रियोलॉजी इन विच द फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम डेवलप्स और राइट सो वी मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट द मुलेरियन डक्ट्स ओके दे आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज पैरा मीजो नेफ्रिक डक्ट्स ओके दे आर गोइंग टू बी फॉर्मिंग एट द रीजन क्लोज टू वेयर द एवर्टा इज सो द मेन वेसल्स आर इन द एम्ब्रियो and they are going to be close to the region of the mesonephric duct so the mesonephric duct besides that you have the paramesonephric duct now as the fetus grows these ducts keep on descending downwards and when they descend downwards they are going to form two ducts two mullerian ducts we are which are lying close to each other all right these guys actually give rise to the formation of the fallopian tubes all right along with the fallopian tubes they give rise to the formation of the upper two thirds of the vagina all right this is how it is formed and the lower one third of the vagina which is present this lower one third of the vagina comes as an offshoot from the cloacal membrane so you have this cloacal membrane here okay and from the cloacal membrane you have development of the lower one third of the vagina in fact this lower one third of the vagina along with that also helps in the formation of the perineum and it also helps in the formation of anus as a result of which when you have cloacal abnormalities so this is your clinical correlation you are going to have cloacal mar formations where you have an absent anus absent perineum and absent one third of the vagina okay simultaneously important to understand that your upper two third of the vagina is going to be formed from the mullerian duct so whenever you have mullerian anomalies like let's say mrkh or any other form of mullerian anomalies your upper two thirds of the vagina is going to be absent which is what we normally call as oh the patient is having an mrkh syndrome and then we say it's a blind vagina because the lower one third is only present in that situation all right now it is important to understand all mullerian anomalies simply based on this concept okay please understand that this actually if i just magnify okay this actually forms the uterus and the fallopian tubes all right these guys are close proximity to each other and they form the uterus and the fallopian tubes but please understand that when they form this okay when they form this thing first this upper two third part of the vagina which is present no all the region surrounding that is the muscle first okay everything is the muscle now after this muscle what typically happens is this muscle then undergoes canalization so vagina also has muscle as a result of which when it undergoes canalization okay this canalization is not how we think in a straight line this canalization which occurs in the cavity of the uterus and in the vagina is something which we called as a differential canalization so that means first some part will go then the other part will go then this will go then this will go and eventually what happens is the entire part undergoes a beautiful canalization the septum from everywhere simply disappears and it gives rise to the formation of the uterus as we see it okay it gives rise to the formation of a nice beautiful single uterus single upper two thirds of the vagina at both the places the uterus is lined with the muscle vagina is lined with the muscle because vagina has vaginal muscle inside that and then you have a cavity which has been formed inside that all right now this will explain this concept of differential canalization of this tract will explain all the abnormalities okay which we can probably think of okay when you have a differential canalization of the mullerian tract now let's go very very quickly through all the anomalies one by one by simply understanding this concept so i can sort of label 10 anomalies which are going to be present okay when i just draw the uterus okay when there is no canalization which has occurred between the two uteri okay you have presence of something called as a didelphis uterus correct this is a very common thing let's assume the septum inside so the canalization inside the uterus has not occurred completely then you have formation of a 
septum inside the uterus but let's assume the these two horns have got joint but a part of this muscular fiber has not canalized then the cavity gets obliterated and in that part it gives rise to formation of something called as robert's uterus same thing happens to the vagina let's assume one vagina canalized and the septum in between the two fail to canalize it gives rise to something called as ovira syndrome very common but understand one thing mullerian okay and mesonephric so kidney is very close to this development as a result of which renal anomalies are very very common all right as a part of this development you must understand this simultaneously you have lots of combinations and permutations of this uterus non canalization or differential canalization of this uterus is also going to give rise to anomalies like a unicornuate uterus only one side of the uterus is present okay it is going to give rise to something called as bicornuate uterus okay one cervix or it can have two cervix and there are bicornua it will give rise to didelphis as i already mentioned it will give rise to something called as a transverse vaginal septum so let's assume you have this uterus which is present here you have this beautiful uterus which is present here this is the vagina everything underwent canalization but a part okay forgot to got canalized that causes a transverse vaginal septum everything including the cloaca underwent complete canalization but only at the tip of the cloaca here the canalization failed it gives rise to formation of imperforate hymen okay so almost every complex mullerian anomaly you can understand and address if you understand this concept of differential canalization of the mullerian tract finally let me tell you because the uterus is muscle because the vagina is muscle when you do surgeries for neo vagina okay you need some form of muscular development in order to maintain long term patency of that tract okay many many times the procedures which we do involves only pushing up the cloaca from here it involves only peritoneal pull through from all these sides which may or may not be completely effective in maintaining the canalization and this forms the basis of discussions of entire mullerian anomalies which we will be discussing throughout our series i hope everybody has enjoyed thank you so much for watching and listening to this entire video episode and bye bye all right